Hi everyone and welcome to Sorting Algorithms Learning Tool um, and today we'll be talking about radix sort as part of my third year project. Um, so in radix sort uh, the word radix refers to base so very similar to other mathematical functions like, uh, like log logs so log base 10 so it's the same base, it refers to the same base um, and then it also radix sort also involves working with the number of unique digits. So when I mean digits, uh, so it's for example, eight hundred and two. The number of bit digits in eight hundred and two is equal to three. So um, that's the first. So this is one digit. This is one digit, and this is one digit. But um, each digit has their own unique, well not each digit, but the first and last digits has their, have their own unique um, name. So this is called the most significant digit. Um, and this is the least significant digit. Uh, so you can, see, you can see there's a lot of of uh, variations of radix sort and some of them work based on most, some of them are based on sorting from most significant digit to the least significant digit. And those include uh, re recursion, the use of recursion, um, in place um, radix sort implementations, and also making radix sort stable. Um, and other like parallel alternatives also. Uh, and there's also a try based radix sort, which is also based on um, um, MSD, which is the most significant digit, and then there's um, variations where it's least, where it sorts from the least significant digit to the most significant digit, and that most of those are like the iterative, iterative version using queues, which I'll be demonstrating. Um, yes, so without further ado, I'll talk about the data structure involved in radix sort and what radix sort. What's the definition of radix sort? So. And the definition of radix sort is it's a non-comparative algorithm like bucket sort, like counting sort, um, that sorts the list of numbers digit by digit from the least significant digit to the most significant digit or vice versa. This determines the rel relative order between the numbers in the list. So I'll be running through some examples today and hopefully you should understand what I'm talking about. Um, so like I said before, the data structure of radix sort uses an array. Array. Um, it's the worst case of radix sort is O N K, um, and then the average case is theta N K, and oops, and then the best case is omega nk so you can see it's a very consistent algorithm and theoretically it performs much better than uh, like merge sort with n log n and then the worst case space complexity is big O n plus k and um, this is mostly because of the subroutines because it uses different sorting algorithms different stable sorting algorithms like counting sort like bucket sort or even bubble sort, in fact, to sort the individual digits. So like a subroutine, basically, because uh, counting sort is big O, N. Actually, it's O, K, not O, N. OK. Yep, so that's, that's counting sort. Um, and then I'll be talking, I'll be running through an example of how counting sort works. So consider this list of numbers. Um, and, that, and the iterative version of counting sort will first, the algorithm will split each element in the unsorted list into individual digits. So in a way, they will, it, the algorithm can identify each, uh, this, this number, it won't be appear as 170, but instead, it will be a pair. It will appear as one seven one seven zero. Uh, so it'll be one seven zero, and then this one will be the same, vice versa. So it's just to, the the 
algorithm will now know it's the know each individual digit. So that they used uh, they used like a bucket implementation for this. Um, so the algorithm will sort each number by the first digit. So this is the first digit. So um, the f yeah, the first thing the algorithm will do is to sort by first digit, and then that will be, so then that will be uh, one seventy ninety because both zeros, and then it'll be eight hundred and two because that's what's next in this list. So seven hundred seventy ninety. 802 and then it'll be the 2 and then it'll be 24 it will be 45 75 and 66 so you notice that it'll be so you notice the first digit order will be 0 0 2 2 4 5 5 6 so that's in ascending order um, and you notice that even though 802 is bigger than 2 um, the order, the previous order of this is that 802 was in a, a lower index than 2. So the order has to be maintained throughout. So it's, it isn't until, it isn't until the f most significant digit when we actually swap 2 and 802. So, um, so for the next, when well, we swap by the next digit, next digit, and the next digit, is um, the next digit is the second digit and notice that 2 doesn't have a second digit so for empty digits it's just treated just it's just replaced with a zero so nope nope so yeah so now we'll be sorting so now it'll, the order will be so first it will be either it will be 802 because it's zero and then it will be zero to two because of the zero, and then it will be 24 because of the two, uh, 45, 66, 170, 90, and that's it. That's it. So you can see that if we're comparing the second digit, which is the next digit, it will be 0, 0, 0024679, which is also in ascending order. Um, and notice once again that these two are not in the right order yet. So after that, the algorithm will then move on to the last, uh, the last pass in a way because it's the most significant digit, which is the last pass. So sort by um, the last digit, last digit, which is the most significant digit. And this is the least significant digit. So after this, um, you put another two on top of it because there's it's an empty digit, and so is are these digits. So then, <clears throat> eight is bigger than zero zero two. Eight is bigger than zero, so zero zero two should go here. Uh, because of this one actually, yeah. And then you have <coughs> two, which I mean zero, which comes again. And then we have zero four five. And notice we are just comparing it. We're not even comparing zero and two and four because that's already done previously. We just need to worry about the zeros because the order is already done beforehand in the previous pass. So it'll be 0, 6, 6. And then 1 is not greater than 0. So then it'll be 0, 90. 1, 70 because of the 1. And then lastly, it'll be the 8, 0, 2 because of the 8. So you can see it'll be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 8, which is again in descending order. And notice after the last pass, after sorting the most significant digit, your list is sorted. Um, 
And yes, you just need to make sure that um, that you when you're you're when you're sorting by the last digit, you're only considering the last digit. When you're sorting by the uh, second digit, you're only considering the second digit. You do not have to worry about the previous digits uh, or the c coming digits. So next I want to talk about the runtime of Radix Sort. So normally uh, the runtime is given as O, big O, D, uh, times N plus B, where D is uh, the number of digits in the given list. N is the number of elements, so the length of your array. And D is the number of digits. Or should I say the length of digits? But yeah, and then B is the the size the size of your base or bucket. And in the case of a decimal representation, which is what's mostly used, <coughs> it is uh, the 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 base for decimal decimal representation is base 10. So norm so that means that's why you see buckets of size 10 or like um, constant sizes for the bucket. If you try to use different types of number representations then that might yield different uh, run times and complexities. Um, so now I'll be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of Radix sort. Um, I'll start with the talk about the count uh, it, it, it uses subroutine sorting algorithms to sort the digits, so stuff like it's like um, counting sort and that requires uh, extra additional memory space um, requires memory space to sort the digits um, so that might slow down the algorithm depending on the amount of memory space you have um, and basically the want of Advantages of radix sort is that the worst case time complexity is O N K, which is um which is still much better than the likes of like O N squared. However, radix sort is not stable, not stable or in place. However, there are many implementations, many variations that you can achieve that can counteract this disadvantage in a way, so you can achieve a stable algorithm or achieve an in-place algorithm, but those implementations do come at a cost, um, might, may require extra, even more memory, um, and they might affect your runtime, so it's different implementations yield different results. Um, uh, Radix sort, however, only applies to a limited amount of data sets. So it works for integers, fixed size strings, floating points, um, stuff in like in lexographic order comparisons. But compared to comparison sorts like quick sort, merge sort, heap sort, etc, it can which can accommodate much more different data type data sets. Also radix sort is known it's not practically used compared to like quick sort or variations of quick sort like intra quick sort I believe where it mix it randomly mixes the unsorted list beforehand so then it doesn't achieve the the worst case n squared complexity for quick sort so this way uh, radix sort it is still less practical compared to stuff like quick sort. So as you can see, the first thing the algorithm does is um, this. Dig creates this empty list of uh, digit buckets and then it also sets itself an index to index through this digit bucket. The maximum number is basically the number with the, um, the longest digits and they'll use that to see how much times this loop will iterate through. And then you approach this loop which loops through your list of unsorted numbers and then the get digit will get each get each digit from each number so if you're working with the least significant digit it will be getting the least significant digit of each number so once it gets the digit it will check and um, check this array digit buckets array at element digit and then once and then if it's defined 
it will set it equal to this this digit but if it's not defined it will create a second dimension for this array so it's uh, it, it's essentially turning the digit buckets from a one di dim dimension array to a two dimension array and then filling it up with more and more digits that's being added um, and then this is pushing it back into the list and then this stage is just uh, rebuilding the list based on the the relative order that we've gathered so this this is the procedure where you can create the list from an ascending order or de descending order in a way and as you can see that this part is ac assessing the uh, two-dimensional array and then placing that element into back into the the list